All right, let's take a look if we can get a connection, a good EEG connection. We're using the free EEG32 and the 19 channel headset. Here's a complete set and the amplifier sits in here, the, the back of the head. And there we have a stretching cap that has 19 electrodes and two ear clips. And it connects via optical connection right here. We have an optical uh, transmitter here and it goes to the other side to a USB dongle that, uh, that plugs in and um, in that way we don't have any interference coming from the computer. Now the system is powered through a power bank so at the back of the amplifier we have two ear clips coming out here and we have one more cable here that goes uh, which is just a USB cable that powers the system. Also there is a button there um, for marking events. And these four ports here are for connecting additional uh, channels um, because we have 32 channels and we're only using 19 on this cap so additional channels are here. Um, let's, uh, let's get this system connected. It connects to the head through the, to the scalp by saline solution with sponges. And um, I have a cup of tap water here with some with half a teaspoon, te teaspoon of kitchen salt. And the sponges have been soaking in that for a few minutes and they're ready to be used. So let's, um, let's take a look at that. I will need tweezers for this to insert them properly. The first thing I do is I actually I remove the sponges from the water and I squeeze most of the liquid out and we will put the liquid back in later but right now for the next step we do need the sponges to be soft so they should already be soaked but we do need them to not be dripping wet all right so what i do is i take my my tweezers and one by one i insert these sponges into these nodes of the headset and they insert from the bottom and we have these cones here those cones they contact the they basically poke through the hair and um, and they they make space so i insert them like this they should be sticking out one or two millimeters and we have 19 of them to do so i will just do that like this Now the reason why I'm using tweezers to do this uh, to do this job, yeah, I will show you. Here I have a, a cutaway from one of the electrodes, one of the nodes, and the electrode itself is this gold-plated bar here. Let's see if we can get some focus. There's a gold-plated bar here. That's the electrode, and. If I just were to use my fingers to insert a sponge like this, then sometimes, quite often actually, you see it leaves a little bit of space between the sponge and the electrode because the sponge just compresses. And then it looks all right from the outside, but you're not actually getting a signal. So instead of just squeezing it in with the fingers, we use tweezers and we insert them all the way, having a good connection and then you never have to worry about that problem. All right, so I will continue with the sponges like this. And with a little bit of practice, this, uh, this will only take you a few minutes, only a minute or two. Of course there are 19 of these, so...
All right, that's done. Now we need to re-soak them because um, they do need to be very wet. And we'll get my cup of water again and I have a syringe here which I already filled with the same saline. And um, I just want to show when I have a single sponge here right now after I've squeezed out, squeezed out all the liquid. Of course it's still soft but it is, let's call it a light shade of blue. And now when I hold the, the syringe against it and I allow some drops to go in, you can see it turns dark blue. So that's what we want to see happening with all of these. Um, and there is at the back, like on the top of every node, there is a hole and it is large enough to fit the syringes. So we just look on this side and as I squeeze in some liquid, we can see it turning dark blue. So that's ready. And the next one. And that's ready. Now the amplifier at the bottom is not in a waterproof case. Of course, it's... Uh, so we have to be a little bit careful here not to drip anything on the amplifier, not to get the amplifier wet. And this process can go pretty quickly with a little bit of practice. And those sponges are very absorbent, so if you just do this gently, you will not drip anything because the sponges will hold on to everything. Syringe a bit. All right, that's all of them. So um, I'll switch back to this camera. Now you can see I have uh, a lot of hair, so it will give a good demonstration of the capacity of this uh, of this headset. And um, the way to put it on after practicing it for a few times, it's, it's very easy. I hold it upside down by the by the strings like this and um, I'll get the, the USB and the optical cable and the, um, and the uh, ear clips cables sort of out of the way like this and now I'm going to put it on and so these here in the front there they're the frontal electrodes and I'm going to sort of that's how I imagine it to be I'll, I'll grab them with my forehead all right, let's see. One, two. There we go. All right. Now, let's... Um, we're not ready yet, but uh, now we want to see something else as well. First, I'm going to make a connection to the system. So I have selected COM9, which is for me the case. Start, and now we can see here that the data records are coming in. And now let's look at, um, at our ADF browser. I'll open the string. And this one is the file that we just created. I will just load all the signals and then load my montage there we go these are the 19 channels that we have 
Right now, of course, we don't have any decent signal yet because the ear clips are not connected. So let's move on to step two, getting the ear clips ready. I use a bit of this one step abrasive gel. It's both abrasive and conductive. And I scrape my earlobes nice and clean. No dead skin cells remaining there. And here, the same thing. And then I put my ear clips. one ear clip and here comes the other and already we see some channels but not yet all of them are starting to work because now next thing um, we have to get everything properly connected because the um, the node where it touches the head it has this cone shape and right now because we just put on the headset that cone is just sitting on the hair and that doesn't help us. Now here, of course, in the front, that is not an issue. And so hence we see the frontal channels are already uh, working beautifully. Um, but uh, the other ones are just still sitting on the hair. So what we do is we shift around the nodes. And then because of their shape, they move around the hair. And they sort of dig their way, their burrow into the layer of hair. And as you do that, all of a sudden, so I'll, I'll start here in the front to show you. Um, and then, well, these two already have a good connection. Now let's move here to C3 and C4. And as you do this, you start to feel a refreshing liquid <laughs> touching your scalp. see how that is. Almost there, let's see. I can improve a little bit on these guys. All right, well, the back lobe typically has a higher amplitude, so I should add right now there is no 50 hertz filter. There's only a 3 to 45 bandpass. Um, so I would say that's, uh, that's pretty good for no notch filter. Um, now that I've sort of burrowed all of the electrodes down to the hair, I want to make sure that I'm actually in the right positions. Um, because it is an elastic cap, it is possible for you to shift the electrodes quite a bit. And it requires the knowledge of how the 1020 system is laid out. Um, so I'm actually already quite happy with where my front frontal electrodes are. And uh, I just want to feel the spacing out between the others. And that seems to be quite all right. So I'm going to call this good. This seems to be well, this, this side could this side could be a little bit lower. All right, now let's see what happens when I do install a 50 hertz notch. All right, so that cleaned up uh, several of the channels, but But it didn't make a big difference, so that means that we had a good contact. Now, of course, I, I was still touching my computer. And the beautiful thing about having the optical fiber is that you can remove yourself from the electronics by a big distance. Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, I should keep this uh, on the foreground. <laughs> So now you can see when I blink, we 
get the typical blinking all the way in the front and when I clench my jaw we get what we expect from that um, there is a there is a button it's all the way at the bottom and uh, it has a very different amplitude so I just need to press it a couple times and set the range for it so now I can create markers for events and this is the system um, so that took uh, you know without all the talking it would be uh, less than 10 minutes and a little bit of practice but then you get a very good clear signal um, and you can record like this for hours and hours um, I mean not 24 hours but 3-4 hours without any issue I've done it so many times with multiple people and um, it's very rare that you have to I've, I've never had to refill the liquid in the sponges because the um, the nodes on the headset they enclose the sponge right so the sponge doesn't get to dry out and, um, and the skin also doesn't absorb the liquid so I mean you know, not significantly so so this will give you multiple hours of uh, of uh, recording without needing any intervention also I should add that uh, this is a lot of hair <laughs> um, and uh, so this is basically the most challenging uh, test that I could throw at it let's see what happens when I close the eyes for a few moments Alright, so mostly in the back we had some, uh, some alpha and also a bit in the front Well, that's the system and uh, good luck with it